We are just a few days away from official summer and right now the forecast is only getting hotter for much of the U.S. So our own medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley is joining us live. So we've got some questions from DBL Nation, okay, Dr. Coley, about some health topics that are big in the news right now. So our first one is from Candace and she's wondering about the heat too. She says it's not even officially summer and this heat wave is intense. Can these extra high temperatures affect our health, Dr. Coley? Yes, they can, Candace. and every time I go outside, I think about how hot it is, and I think about the effects on my health. So there's direct effects. It can cause, you know, heat stroke, heat illness, dehydration. There's also indirect effects, actually. It can increase your risk from chronic conditions like heart disease uh, and kidney problems, diabetes, and it can affect, as you guys know, our power, our water supply, our access to care. So the heat has been tough on all of us, mm -hmm. and we have to be extra mindful of our health this year. All right, Doc. Malcolm asks, I heard that this June there are more COVID-19 hospitalizations than there were last June. How is that possible, Doc? Yeah, this caught me off guard too, you guys, because we have all these vaccinations, so we would expect less people in the hospital. But two big things are different this year. Number one, our behavior. We are having parties, we're getting together, we're seeing each other. Number two, and more importantly though, Malcolm, is the fact that there's these new variants, which are now dominant here in the United States. They're more contagious and they can end you up more in the hospital. So it's just a sobering reminder to all of us, as much as we want it to be over, the pandemic is not quite yet over. I appreciate that. All right, Tony, Wants to know CNN anchor Christiane Amapour just announced her ovarian cancer to raise awareness. We want uh, Tony wants to know who is the most high risk for that specific disease. You know, I'm so glad you asked, Tony, because most of the ovarian cancer is diagnosed late, greater than 75%. And early diagnosis is key to good prognosis. So all of us women, let's think about all the women in our life. And Jeff, you think about all the women in your life. And we really have to think about who's high risk. And high risk are people who've had breast cancer before, people who've never given birth, um, people who are older, and people who have genetic conditions like BRCA1, BRCA2, or Lynch syndrome, and then those who have endometriosis. So the idea here, ladies, is that when the ovary ovulates, gives off an egg, it breaks through the surface of the ovary, and that can cause damage. So anytime you stop ovulation, like with birth control, with breastfeeding, or with pregnancy, you actually reduce your risk of ovarian Whoa. cancer. So wow. think about all the women in your lives and assess their risk. Wow. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to say anything, Dr. Coley, so I'm being muzzled. <laughs> Yeah, Al, I didn't even uh, see you over there. I've been waiting to say it on this show for a while. <laughs> Do you know what she Recordings. <laughs> you know what she just said? She goes, oh, I didn't even see you, Al. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, that was a wild Love you, Dr. Coley. Love you, Doc. We'll Love be right you. Back. Bye. <laughs> that was